This is the second part of the lecture 8, so let me continue with the topic, namely we will prove the next theorem. which will be the Ries theorem, Ries representation theorem for L1 x mu, so that means for L1 function. So, in this theorem, we will just simply state the following. So, suppose x m mu is a sigma finite measure space. and defined the operator and I put here T that goes from L infinity X mu to L1 X mu dual so it will be defined as follows, namely Tf applied on H by the definition will be nothing else than X F H D mu, a familiar formula already. Then T is bijective. which means that A for every functional phi belonging to the L1 x mu star there exists a function f belonging to L infinity x New, satisfying the formula namely that that let's write it down that that phi h is exactly x and this will be f h t mu and this will be for every h So in other words, phi can be represented as this integral, as this functional x f integral with the integral here. Yeah. So this means that's the why we call it representation theorem because it represents the functional functionals on a L1 by the by this duality map. So, and the B, of course, B immediately follows from the bijectivity that in this case we have here that L1 X mu dual is the same up to isometry as L infinity x mu. Here we will also show that in addition we have here that this phi has the norm as f infinity. So that's an I, that means simply that the that the t is an isometry. So that means t t is an isometry. So that's the formulation and we will just move directly 
to the proof of the theorem. So start with the proof. So first of all, since x and this is m mu is sigma finite, we can assume without loss of generality that exactly x is equal union n is equal 1 to infinity of x n and here we have here that uh, all x n belong to n so for every n n x n is contained in x n plus 1 we can always make this sequence increasing and in such a case if you have such an increasing sequence then we can also add here that mu of x n is smaller than infinity. We can add larger than zero. Other, otherwise, everything is trivial. So maybe six x n, hmm. and that will be smaller than infinity. But we put here larger than zero. So for every and so that, this, those are not a, those are not a assumption. Uh, that means you can always construct such a x n. So by the fact that uh, the space is sigma finite. Then next we can define the function. Define the function the function. And I put this function like this, call this theta that goes from x to r by the following. So choose first, choose, so put it down, so first dot, maybe bullet, choose epsilon n, a sequence, a sequence, of epsilon n f epsilon n and then we assume going to zero we will specify how fast it goes to zero to be specified to be specified such that no 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 and defined bullet phi of x will be equal epsilon 1 if x belongs to x1 phi of x will be equal to epsilon 2 if x belongs to x2 minus x1 and then we can go by induction and put here like this if x n if x belongs to the x n minus x n minus one. So now of course we can if if which if in particular these numbers epsilon n so okay, if epsilon n are chosen such that this series n is equal 1 to infinity and here I put here epsilon n square and that one hmm, and that one is equal mu square and I put here like this x and those are final numbers if this is finite we can always choose these numbers remember did I put that epsilon n are all positive so put here n so add it clearly that epsilon n is positive. It's not a zero. Then, of course, then we are getting here that this function, then this function is theta, 
belongs to L2 on X mu. So we have such a function. Very good. So now, now, assume, did I, did I have it here? Okay, I didn't do it. So now, let phi belongs to the L1 and X mu star be an arbitrary functional. Functional. Function. So, so now, starting with this function, we do the first thing. First, first, we defined an operator, and I put here the operator S that goes from L to X mu, and it goes to the L1 of X new by simple thing namely I just take it like that I just simply write it down so s of v will be equal and I multiply theta times v theta times v so v is of course an element r2 and x mu so notice notice that if I take the norm S of V2 square, so it will be nothing else than this is X, and here we have here theta V G mu, so the by the holder inequality, holder, maybe right it just simply holder. This is mu smaller equal and negative. This is L2. Very good. Uh, did I do it? Something? Yes, of course. 1. This is the norm 1. It's nothing else than X. And this is theta V. D mu by the holder. Smaller equal to theta square times, and that one is v square smaller than infinity. So, so we also we are getting here immediate. Maybe maybe put it like this. So s is a bounded operator. <coughs> So this is a bounded operator. Therefore, we can, we have the following composition. Composition of continuous linear operators. So what is this composition? So first we have here L2, this is x and mu, this is our s, it goes to L1 x mu, and here we have our functional that we chosen, so we can take this composition, what do I get here? I'm getting this is s composed with phi, and that means nothing else than that's a phi s is a continuous function on L2, so it belongs to L2 x mu star. But we already proved the represent the Ries representation. theorem for any p between 1 and infinity, so for p equals 2 in particular, thus there exists 
there exists and you belonging here of course to L2 and this will be x nu such that and we can write it down for every v belonging to the L2 x mu we have here that we have here that phi applied on theta v is equal and we are getting here the representation so this would be x and then you have here the function u times v and this will be d mu remember that this is the functional this is the functional that applied on that one so this is our function that takes let me to specify this is takes here v and maps it here to this to the value of phi and this is take on v so this we are getting this representation and and basically we are almost there so let me simply do the next step then well, we have this function so this is our sorry. This is our representative u. This is u exists. So we have here now this representative. So put we put here like this. Put f of x is equal, and this will be u of x divided by theta of x. Notice that theta of x is all the time positive, and this is a well-defined function. Where the function, and we are claiming that this is our required. We claim that this is our required function. function f in the statement of the theorem. So first, couple of notice, remarks, notice that first thing, a, one. So for every n, we have here that f times mm -hmm, the Characteristic function, maybe like this, like this. Maybe I should, I should, I should specify it. Sorry, the, we specify it like this. Notice that for I take the characteristic function of this set. I'm just simply writing down that one of x n. This is this, the characteristic function of x n that we have that, that that has measure. So remember, measure of x n is finite. So notice that for we have, we have, so the first one, this is my first remark, put it like a bullet, that for every n, this f times mm -hmm, x n belongs to the L2, and this is x mu. Yes, indeed, look what it is. So let me, let me make a verification. So f times that function is nothing else than this is u times and this is key n divided by theta but u belongs to the u belongs to the l2 and clearly that one is a two l2 that's a step function notice so i put it here like this step maybe sip Maybe let's say a like simple, simple function. So simple function, every simple function is in every LP. So that's, that, that means you don't need to worry. So definitely in L2. And consequently, so in particular it's in L infinity to maybe like this, 
because that's a L infinity definitely. So this will be that two. And now we have also second one. And here we can put it like this. So take any V. Suppose that V is now in L infinity of X mu. And for everything I put it like this. This will be apply phi and apply this function, characteristic function on V and evaluate it. So of course, if this is L infinity, it sits in every, in, in, so, and that one has the measure, right? So that, so that function definitely sits in L1 of X mu. So you can take this value here. And also, also it's of course in L infinity X mu. So now, of course, you can evaluate, and what do I get? I can write it down like this. This is phi, and I put here theta. Theta is a positive function, and I put here psi n v divided by theta, and I see, ah, as we notice, this is an infinity, so that also is in, 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 in L2. Ah, that one belongs to L2 as well. We, we showed it, we showed it, so, so because L, L as, I, as I mentioned, the function, the function L infinity sits actually, sit, so this function V times Xn belongs to every LP. Look, this is a bounded function, zero outside a set of measure zero is in every space LP, so that's a well-defined value, so, so of the in so we, we have here L2 and now by the previous line we can say like this this is by the representation that we found you can find it out that that is maybe let me refer to the formula yes this is our formula call it like a star is it first star or second star let me check uh, no stars no stars no stars no stars no stars yeah, first star, then by the star, this will be x, and I'm having here u times x and v theta d mu, and move it u under, uh, sorry, theta under u, and then you are getting x and v d mu, and then write it down, this will be x, and then I have here f. Uh, eta dv d mu. And we need these relations, call these relations here double star. We need these relations to show that we sh will show, will show that this norm f infinity is smaller than infinity. In fact, we claim, we claim that f infinity is smaller than the norm of this phi. Okay, indeed. Suppose, so let me check. Okay, let me say like this. Choose, choose, choose a number c which is larger than phi. So the norm of phi and consider consider the set and the set I call the set A the set A which will be equal the set of our axes such that f of x is larger and equal c. So I need to show, so clearly, in order to show this inequality, in order to show this inequality, we need to show simply that the measure of this set A is zero. So that's what we need to show. That's what we need to show. So in order to do it, we will do the following, namely, first of all, we will consider this so put, put, take maybe, take, and in the formula, this is, where is my formula here, 
double star in the formula you take in double star the function v equal exactly the characteristic function of that of that set so what do we get so we get the following the following so namely on the not necessarily no not enough times signum of f so we get so we get and let me say again where is it here we get phi applied on the so this is psi and this is my v times a times signal f so that's my v so of course that one is smaller equal hmm. not not good planning not good planning, not good planning. maybe here yeah. so put it like this phi and then I put here that one and my v is this one times signal f and this one is uh, our v so by the formula double star I can write it now this is x and I'm getting here this is f and then you have here signum f times n times a d mu and on the left on the other hand on the left I have here this is smaller and that one is equal norm of phi because remember it's a continuous functional and then the signum f etc take the absolute value of that one and the norm so put it like this this is the norm of this function psi n times a times signum of f and this will be norm in the first space in the first l1 space but that value is not difficult to notice this is f and here we are getting measure of the set x, x and intersection with a yes and similarly on that side you continue we continue this this one so you can see that that one is larger no that's actually equal and we have here this is zero outside the set x and intersection a here we have here f and this will be getting d mu and then you look on the definition of the set A. The definition of the set A is that on the, this function f of x is larger than c, so I can use it now. Let me use it. So I'm getting here that this one is larger equal, and again c times x and intersection a d mu which gives me c times the measure of x and intersection of a and let me write it clearly that means we got that phi times mu of x and a is larger equal to c and this is mu x and intersection of a and i claim that this implies this definitely implies that mu of x and intersection of a must have a zero measure if this is not a zero measure then you would be canceling here and you will cancel these two terms and you will get phi larger equal of c which would be a contradiction which will be contradiction with our assumption with our assumption that here this number c was chosen to be larger so it's not possible so that means this set has the measure zero and 
and definitely so this union, countable union of sets of measure zero has a measure zero, so mu of A is also having measure zero. And then thus we prove that this inequality is indeed true. And here we have here, yes, this means that thus we have here that the norm of F infinity is smaller equal than the norm of this functional phi. And that means F is a, an element of the space L infinity x mu. Once we have this element, now we can proceed further. Namely, we can definitely show that this is actually a representation. So maybe notice that, notice that for any for any function v belonging to L1 x mu we can choose the sequence v k of simple functions convergent to V in L1. So it will be convergent. And now, since we have, since for any, since VK belongs to the L infinity X mu, we also have here that this will be like this phi, and here we have N, and this will be VK. N is fixed in this moment, will be equal X, and this will be F, and this will be x n, and this will be v k d mu. And now, by the continuity of continuity continuity of of the functional phi, as k goes to infinity, we will get here phi of psi n v. And on the other hand, we will get that this one, as k goes to the infinity, by the continuity of the measure. F now we know is in the L infinity, so here we have we have definitely continuity of this integral. So we are getting this will be x, yeah, and we put here f psi n and v d mu. So we got it called these three stars. We have it, and finally there is nothing much more to prove it. It's simply for every v belonging to L1 x mu, we are having here that this one, phi of v is equal again by the continuity, n goes to infinity, phi, and this will be he n v, but that one will be equal to limit, n goes to infinity, and this will be f, and this is psi n v, and maybe I should go here, and we are getting here, this one is equal f v d mu of x, so that, 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 that is going here, and we get the required, the required, uh, the required uh, representation. So there is only one more thing to show, namely, but this is trivial, Notice that here, of course, phi, because this is the norm of phi, you are getting here from this integral using, again, the, maybe, maybe I would go to the new page, and then, then since, since you have here like this, uh, phi of V, and this is V belongs to L1 X mu, and this is for every is equal x, and this is f, and this is v d mu. So in such a case, in such a case, we are getting here the, the norm, the, the norm of phi, which is equal supremum of v equal to 1 phi v, right? And that one is smaller equal than, than the norm of x 
put it like this, the norm of f infinity, we obtain also, also that the norm of phi is actually equal to the norm of phi infinity, and we are done. We are done. So, <coughs> maybe let's also make a few conclusions around this separability. So, so put it like this, few remarks about separability of the spaces LP x mu for one smaller than p smaller than infinity. And let me recall, recall, in lecture six we proved that the space C K R of all continuous functions phi from K to R such that phi is continuous and K D is where is a compact metric space is separable is separable so we have this result actually we proved that this space here k is any for example could be any compact topological space so this space would be separable if and only if k is metrizable so we had this question here in also involving metrizability linked to the separability of that space. And, and let me mainly introduce kind of a notion, so let's say like this, suppose, so maybe I just formulate the theorem, theorem, theorem. Let x hmm, b, put it like this, b, and this will be mu, b, a metric measurable space such that x is equal, and write it down, union n is equal 1 to infinity, kn, where kn are compact sets. So it is a countable union of, of, of compact sets. So in such a case, 10, we have the statement, for every p, for every one smaller than p, smaller strictly than infinity, the space, the space L p x mu is separable. Separable. Do the proof briefly. The issue, we have the issue that uh, we need to, to restrict our time on this certain topics because we have still one more important topic to cover, namely fret operator. So let me just sketch the proof. Sketch is very easy. Notice that if I take the function, notice that for every n, c, and that one is a x, cx, not xn, kn, kn, R is contained in L P K N R. Do you see this? And that one is of course contained in L P X R. You just take here 
enter it in, included here. So here we know that, well, we proved it in the previous lecture, that this was dense. That this was dense. The C is dense. So let, let Sn be the B accountable, accountable, be accountable dense set in C, K, and R. So this is dense. So here we have here S and C here. So we know that this set will be also dense here. So this set will also be dense, dense here, is dense here. So we can do the following, put S will be union of N is equal 1 to infinity of all the sets as N and clearly S is countable And we claim that it is dense. In L, P, X, mu. So in order to prove it, it is sufficient to show that any characteristic function and I put here where the measure of the set is finite can be approximated elements from S. But that's not difficult to prove it, mainly since this is uh, this one is like that, so you can say ten you can say there exists so for every epsilon indeed put it like this indeed for every epsilon larger than zero there exists an N sufficiently large such that measure the measure of uh, A uh, minus the measure of a intersection x n, so that's my that's my set is smaller than epsilon. That's by the continuity of the measure such an exists, and in such a case, in such a case, and we also notice that the characteristic function of a times x n belongs to the L p of that's not good that's not good we have now kn smaller than epsilon and put here over 2 so this is half approximation and and we have here that that this function a intersection kn belongs to l p k and mu and here we have here dense set s n so we can approximation we can approximate this characteristic function again my element s belonging to s n and this approximation can be such that Small another, okay, and that's done. And then you are getting it is, it is clearly, clearly separable. So now we have another theor so theorem. Very quickly as well, 
and the theorem says the following that let x m mu be a measure space such that there exists a, a family, so there exists a, a, a family x1, x2, maybe like this, there exists a family of xn, which is subset, all measurable sets from n, satisfying the properties. So the first property that xn intersection xm is empty, empty set for n different than n, the second one, the second one, is that the measure of x n is, mm, let's say, positive, non-zero. And the third one is, of course, that uh, union n is equal 1 to infinity of x n. Uh, not necessary, not necessary. It doesn't really need to be equal. So just simply say like this. Ten. Then the space. Then the space L infinity X mu is not separable. Not separable. It's not separable. It's not separable. And the proof is also very easy. So we, de we, de we put here like this. Let's define the P by the definition is the set of all functions that goes from X to, okay, to values 0 or 1 only, 0 or 1 only, such that for every, for every N, for every N, the function phi restricted to x n is constant. And remember, there are only two possible values, 0 or 1. So either, either this is constant equal 1 or either equal 0. So in such a case, this set P can be identified, you see, can be identified with the, can be identified, so that means like this, so the set, therefore, the set P is in one, two, one correspondence with the family of all sequences. Composed was zero and one, composed of zero and one. So that means you have something like a sequences of this type: uh, Tai one, tai, Tau two, Tau three, blah 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 blah, such that Tau k belongs to the set of zero one. And this, of course, reminds you the digital representation of the numbers from interval zero one as the digit will be zero and this will be tau one, tau two, in the binary, in the binary sense, three, etc. So you know that in this case, this set is, uh, is, uh, has the same cardinality as the set of the real numbers in the interval zero, one. That means it's uh, uncountable, it's not countable, it's not countable. Ten, the only remark is like that for every Phi different for every phi and psi belonging to P. If phi is different than psi, then you have here the norm phi minus psi infinity is equal to 1. So you are getting that P is actually a discrete uncountable set in the space, in the space L infinity. Consequently, there is no way this space can be separable, can be separable. Let me, I should be summarizing all the properties of the, of the LP spaces, but we will do it 
in the lecture 9, just in the beginning of the lecture 9. So, thank you, thank you, and yeah.